Michel, Michel Dasbro, he's a missionary and missionary Prabhu and uh, Jasmani Madagi's son. He's the, he's the second generation in this Prabhu. He's going to talk about agriculture and cow protection. So we're going to have a baby cow show me. And uh, just going to introduce Prabhu here. Just give you. The Prabhu is a disciple of His Holiness Radha Govind Maharaj since 2012. Prabhu's Guru told him to serve cows to please the Lord Govinda. Serving cows since 2016. Prabhu has, uh, he has, his family has uh, 150 acres of land and 18 cows and bulls. He's running a farm called Deal Farm. It's a thing called by Goba Kausal. Thank you. Uh, just, uh, Welcome in Prabhu. I'm going to call him, give a speech now. Thank you.
And another thing is, you know, we have to understand is the today's generation. You know, how many of you like the food here compared to back home? How many of you like the food in back home, wherever you're from, the food back home, or do you like the food here? How many like the food back home? And how many like the food here? One child. So a lot of people, you can see the majority of us, will offer the food back home. Why is that? It's the way the food is grown in this country. Okay? When you go to a grocery store, there's two types of food. There's the conventional food, and then they have a word set that says organic. Right? Organic looks not that great, and it's twice the price. Okay? So conventional food, how is that grown? How, how is the conventional food grown in this country? It's grown with synthetic fertilizers. Okay? Synthetic chemical fertilizers. So what happens is when we consume this food, we're, we're, we're living organism. Okay? So when we consume that food, we're not meant to consume the chemical part of it. So our organs pushes up, right? It removes the, the chemicals that are going into our body. Um, some people might lose their follicles. You know, I started getting involved, uh, you know, in my late 20s. Some people might have thyroid, kidneys, other other issues, skin issues. So we can devolve our chemicals. So we push it out through our organs. They reject those. And so everybody understands that like, conventional food is something that we can consume the chemical part of it. So how is the organic food grown here? What did they put as the fertilizer in organic here? Yeah, that's what I would think, so mother said manure. But we have to go back and realize who's keeping cows here. There's two types of people that keep cows here. A beef farmer or a dairy farmer. There's no one who's actually serving the cows. So the beef farmer, his crop is beef. He's basically slaughtering the big ones and keeping the little ones before the winter comes in for next year. So his crop is beef. He's really not you know, doing anything with the manure. And the dairy farm, he's, they're just exploiting the cows for their milk, really not doing anything for the manure, okay? Uh, so what they do use in this, and a lot of you guys might not know, in organics, number one fertilizer here is liquid fish. So they take the fish and they make it into a liquid form and feed it to the plants. That's what they do. And the number two is blood bone and meal. Blood, go on and go. Let's just sink in for a second. And that is called organic here, and that's what they feed to the plants. Who lives in the soil? Who lives in the soil? Anyone? Yes, who else? Bacteria, fungi, microorganisms? Earthworms. Yes. So, earthworms, I don't know if you mostly you know, are 100% vegetarian. And those are the big guns. Those are the big boys that are in the soil. So well, they're being 100% vegetarian. So what happens when you give them blood, bone, and meal, liquid fish? What happens to them? They all die. So you see the pattern here? Kill the cows, kill the soil, and grow this fake food, give it to human beings, and slowly kill them as well. So the whole cycle is backwards. So this have, has to get changed. So what we do, we have 150 acre land, as Prova said, and we have 18 cows. Uh, I like to change that, 18 gold bunch, you know, cows and bulls. We have seven boys and 11 girls. And we're only milking four of them, and the rest of them, them they live out their lives. So what we do is just let them graze. So when cows are grazing, that's their natural state. They're happy, they're happy with their loved ones, they're not seeing any slaughter being happen. So they're very, very happy. So we let the cows graze the land. And when they're grazing, also what is going on? They're urinating there and they're also popping their down there. So what's happening to the microorganisms that are in the soil at that time? What's happening to them? Flourishing, right? They're multiplying, that's because they're getting natural stuff that they're designed to eat. Right? So now you cultivate that land, you cultivate that land and grow food for human consumption. If you have the milk from us or if you have the 
vegetables from us, you, you know what you will say? You'll say, you know, this reminds me of back home. India ki you know? So, so this is what we're missing. The, the aspect of growing natural, authentic food. And the resources are the milk cows, you know? So it's, a, it's people that have had, you know, this type of food back home who became adults and came here. I was 10 years old when I came here into this country. Uh, but we've always had devotees, you know, Hare Krishna devotees always coming to our house. In fact, actually, we, uh, from Delhi, we had my grandfather had two cows and we actually even got to serve serve a pot with milk in Delhi. So, which was a huge, huge thing. Maybe that's what uh, Skuti is that are able to serve cows today. And when I was 40, I asked one day to my Guru Maharaj, I said, Maharaj, you know, we take initiation, we chant the Lord's name, we chant the 16 rounds, we follow the four regulated principles, but still feels like Golden is very far away. You know, what can I do? What else can I do to please the Lord? And my Guru Maharaj said, we shall go serve the cows. And I was like, what? <laughs> serve the cows? Like, I was not expecting that. And he goes, go serve the cows. And I said, Maharaj, in Canada? And he said, yes, in Canada. So I came home, you know, discussed it with the family, you know, Maharaj was saying this. And my mom said, you know, you're going to serve the cows or are you going to do business? So we're going to do business, you know. We're not, you know, Nobody brings cows at home, you know what I mean? We're not even, like, we don't even have the space for it or anything like that. So anyhow, uh, we started as a family, we started donating some money and put some gold chalas in India. Started doing that. And then we started, um, you know, but then this guilty consciousness of, you know, Mars is served in Canada and I'm, you know, they're serving, you know, in gold chalas in India is not the right move. So I started going to the dairy farms here. And that's when I really realized what was happening to cows. You know, I had no clue. Like somewhat idea, but not to this extent. So it is unacceptable, you know. Um, also, another part of my life, it's such a vast topic, and I can go on talking about just on the health, but I want to touch a little bit on everything, and if any questions you guys have, I'll let you guys ask me as well. And then there was a past time that happened from Krishna Dita that we ended up getting daisy cows. So this is a, a breed called gear. It's a part of Gujarat, uh, this gear cow originated from. So we actually bought them from Brazil because they went to Brazil and that's where we bought them from. So we have, uh, as I mentioned, um, 11 girls and 7 boys. Another thing I want to a little bit touch, you know, hump, I want to touch a little bit aspect of the spirituality. A lot of people don't understand it. Uh, the spiritual aspect of cows. So how many demigods and gods are in the cows? Okay, let's ask a different question. How many is not in it? Which one is not in it? Not even one. Every single one of them resides in the cow. Lord Hari resides in the heart of the cow. Lord Shiva or Shankar resides in the forehead. Lord Brahma resides in the, in the hump of the cow. Talk about Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh, you know what else to talk about anyone else. So she's even the god of the gods. Lord Krishna takes a raj, the gold huli, from the cows and puts it on his head. There's so many past times with Krishna, you know, how he reciprocates when somebody's serving the cows. So everybody knows about the Govardhan Leela. In the Govardhan Leela, you know, Lord Indra caused havoc in the Raj Mandal. And afterwards the whole Leela happened, Lord Indra could not face for Krishna. He couldn't go face him for what he had done. So he went to Brahmaji and asked him, what can I do? What how should I go? And see Lord Krishna, you know, begging for mercy for what atone myself for what I've done. Lord Brahma said, you know, take the survey cow and when Krishna starts petting the cow, you come from the back, from the tail end of the cow. And that's what he did. And Krishna was not upset about it. He said, it's all good. Don't worry about it. So we all know Krishna loves cows. 
But is there anyone who loves cows more than Krishna? Does anyone know? If there is anybody who loves cows more than Krishna? Yes, there is somebody who loves cows more than Krishna. And her name is Radharani. So Srimati Radharani, Shori Ji, she loves cows even more than Krishna. So how can we prove that? There's a pastime that takes place when a, a demon by the name of Rishtasur came to Vajpanda and he caused havoc in, in Vrindavan. When he would hit his hoofs on the ground, you know, a lot of females would have miscarriage. His horns almost touched the sky, like this sky was a mammoth. Long story short, Krishna ended up killing him. When Krishna killed him, he went to Sri Radharani at night and she said, please don't come close to me. She said, you've done kohatya, kohatya. So you're full of sins. So I don't want to take those sins on. You cannot come near me. He said, I didn't kill any sin. I didn't kill any, any cows. I killed a demon. And Radharani said, yes, he might be a demon, but he's in the form of a cow, form of a bull which is unacceptable. So he tried to persuade her, but she wasn't budging. So then he asked, okay, what can he do to, you know, wash his sins away? And Radharani said, why don't you go and bathe in all the sacred rivers? Go bathe in the Ganga, the Yamuna, Godavari, you know, go, go, Saraswati Ji, you know, go, go bathe in all these rivers, and then you can bathe. So Krishna took his ankle, you know, he, he did it on the floor, make a big pond, and then all the rivers showed up there. And then he bathed in there and he watched the sin of killing cow. And that we all know place is called today is Shankar. And rather So that's the story that shows the two Lord of all lords, you know, Radha and Krishna, how much they love cows. When Krishna was six days old, he killed Putana. How big was Putna? She was three yojan, 12 miles. And Krishna was only six days old. And she couldn't move him from here to here. So his grip is very strong. So once he grabs you, his grip is very strong. And he sucked the life out of her. As soon as he killed her, Mother Yashoda went there and picked him up and took him straight to where? Straight into the Goshala. And now he's getting bathed with Kawi in and everything else. Who is this? The Lord of all lords, the Supreme Personality of God, Lord Sri Krishna, the cause of all causes, is looking, seeking protection from global threat. So it just shows how important cows are to Krishna. You know, there's a lot of things that are happening right now. One of the big movements that's happening right now, I want to touch a little bit on, is veganism. A lot of people are turning into vegan. There's nothing wrong with that if you understand what the main thing behind them is. Basically, the cruelty of the animals. So I look at vegans as, you know, they see there's a problem and they don't want to be a part of it. They don't want anything to do with it, which is great, which is awesome. But, you know, Krishna was not vegan. He's Makancho. You know, he is a Bharati. So, Without Indians, you know, it's very difficult to become, and it's not the right thing to do anyways. So what we do is, as Vaishnavs, is we see there's a problem, but we want to solve the problem. So we go ahead and protect the cows without cruelty. So we don't slaughter any. My grandfather never slaughtered any of the cows or bulls. And you come there, we have seven boys. You can see them. The father is there. Cousins is there, the Masi is there, you know, so you can see that. So we don't have to do this cruelty, they can live out their lives. So another thing I ask the vegans also is, if guys like us don't exist, how do you plan to grow your food? Synthetic fertilizer? Is that how you want to grow your food? It's not practical. You'll be said. You need the cows, it has to be a collusion, it has to be a 360 degree when it comes to that. And you know, a lot of people ask me this question, you know, Prabhu, which milk is good? We buy this milk and we buy A2 milk and A1 milk and all these other things. And I answer this in a very simple manner. 
where the babies are slaughtered and they don't get a drop of that milk, that milk cannot be good for you. As simple as that. You know, any, anybody, it doesn't matter which living entity, as long as you're living entity, even a, a plant, if you don't treat it right, you put them in a stressful condition, how would their output be? It'll be negative. The output will be negative. So, you know, when a cows are happy in their natural state, we're practicing this more and more. We need the babies. And we just separate them at night. And there's still enough milk. There's enough milk for everyone. You know, the cows do give quite a bit of milk. And when they're happy, they, that milk is, is milk for the cows. You know? So, there's a lot of different, different aspects that, uh, you know, I can keep on talking about. And also, I want to touch a little bit on the environment aspect of it. So, when you have a cluster of cows, like in a dairy pen, where you have, let's say, 300 heads or 3,000 heads, you know, cows in one spot, so all their manure is getting together into one spot. So what that does is cause, like, a cluster bomb in the, in the atmosphere, which is called methane. Methane has to be burned. If you release methane into the air, just like that, it's a big, big, big issue. 50% of the climate issues that we have is the greenhouse gases emissions. You know, so, so when you let the cows graze and, and she pops her dung on the floor, you know, there's beetles, there's insects, microbes, there's earthworms that come and devour it. So it does not get released into the air, it goes into the ground. Which is, which is very, very, very important. And another thing is, with the kids over here, today day and age, you know, what do we have to really offer them as parents, as nutrition? If you really look at it, you know, they have to become a father one day, they have to become a mother one day. What do we really have? Cookies? Chips? Artificial flavored drinks? How can we be okay with that? You know, where are they going to get nutrition food? And then they have another problem. Oh, you know, I started holding this when I was maybe 25. So they had two and a half year old knows how to use this better than I do. Their organs haven't developed yet. Their brains have not developed. You know, so not only that they're not getting nutrition, on top of that, they're getting chemicals that they have to fight, plus all this radiation that's going on. So I believe cow protection in today's day and age is not a, it's not a want, it's a need. And this is not something that one family can do. You know, it has to be a collaboration of the community coming together. With so many temples, you know, in the GTA, then why not a Goshala? You know, why not a Goshala? We're the only Goshala in all of the area. You know, so I will humbly request all of you to t become cow protectors. You can go on our website, gearfarms.ca, or you can look at Opal Goshala, and you'll get all the information there. How many have you, of you have been to the farm? So there's a lot of you that still needs to come there. We're open seven days a week. You can call me, but you do need an appointment before you come. You know, and one of the ways that we've thought about call protecting is let us grow food for you. So we will cultivate that land. We will grow the food. But then we have another problem. And the problem is that we're not living in South America. It's a very cold climate country. So the growing season here is very short. Basically, you put the seed in at the end of May, beginning of June. By the time the harvest starts, you're looking at mid-July. And come now, end of September, everything is finished. So you only have like six weeks. If you are really good practicing of uh, agriculture, maybe you know you can grow food for another, you know, say ten weeks. That's about it. How do you protect cows when you can only grow big an income of 10 weeks? So what we have decided to do, you have to eat, survive, 
We all have to eat. Cow service has to be done seven days a week. So we go out to wholesalers and distributors and we buy produce for you guys. Next year, if we have a couple hundred families, we can say no, we can say we already have all the big ticket items. We have the land, we have the cows, we have the manure, we have the tractors. We can start growing the food for you guys. And then when you eat that food, which will be nutrition dense food, that's the game, that's the goal. So I humbly request all of you uh, to sign up. We have this basket system that we deliver to people's homes. Uh, we even at downtown will deliver it. You can get it as weekly or bi-weekly or monthly, whatever works for you guys. Um, so I humbly request that all you guys please take this opportunity on. And if not that, then come to the farm. Do some cow service. You know, just by rubbing a cow, if one of our folli uh, follicle falls off, that 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 lifetime of the sins are eradicated. It's that simple. We have to know who we're dealing with. Lord Krishna, or rather, takes their dust and puts it on the ground. I can go on and on, but I would like to leave this time if anybody has any questions. So please go ahead and do ask me any questions you guys have. We have a microphone, so if anyone wants to raise their hand, we pass the microphone to ask any questions. I'm sorry. This baby calf right now, she is uh, three and a half months, and her name is Saki. Saki, and she's, she's very, very, very calm. And uh, even just to see a cow is suspicious. They say where there are seven girls, seven cows, or five boys, five nandis, that place plays three months of place of building. Have that here in hand. Sorry, yes. Uh, I have a question. You said that uh, the milk that we get is not from the farm you are talking about, right? So, like, I mean, there is only one form, form you said that, you know, that gives a pure milk that we actually should drink. So, like, what's the solution? What we should do? So, so this, is, this is a sad situation we have in this country. If you came to me and you said, oh, well, you know, can, can I get a lay of this cow? Legally, I can chop it and give it to you. Legally, I can slaughter and give it to you. But milk is a criminal offense in this country. You know, if you want halal meat, it's available, no? You want kosher food, it's available, no? So why not from a, a milk from a cow that's, that's not being slaughtered, where the babies are not being slaughtered? Is that too of a vicious demand? Is that too unreasonable to ask? Why is not allowed? We are at the farm working on this, and um, hopefully we have an answer for it. So we have applied for that, that we allow, this allows us to have this milk. We do give milk in the form of, uh, for both, for puja, you know, for deity worship, or worship of the children, we do allow that. But in this country, it's unfortunate, the milk is not allowed. But we all have to come together for that, so we can provide on the cost right now. But we cannot give you milk. We can definitely give you oils. We have the land, we're growing sunflowers, we're growing mustard. So we can definitely, you know, who's getting pure oils today? We can definitely give you that. Someone's getting married, who's getting proper cow now in the oven? You know, we can give you all of that. Any oven, any home you want to do. And kids can pet the cow, she's very calm. Anybody can pet the cow, she's not going to do anything. She's very, very calm. Would that be good for me? Okay, a few more questions. Yes, that's okay. Yes, yes. Well, I'm just requesting everyone to please maintain some silence. And there is a question here. I don't get, kids get so excited. Yes, kids are excited. No, you can see that, right? And this is what they're missing. They should be touching her, you know. They should be coming. Yes, bro. Oh, so. <laughs> 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 you ask my country uh, develop such culture, like say uh, how we have in India, in North America, that there is a concept of uh, miniature cows, I think. 
like the cow doesn't grow up and it's in a form of cow, like whole is its life. Yes, cow from the India, I know it's a small little cow, I think it's from the South India. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Uh, so is it like habitable for them to have, like how people keep pets here? So instead of that, like you know, we can have that culture in North America of keeping that meat cows. Yes, it's a very good question. This is another thing that we've been fighting with the government here. So cows are not considered pets. They're not in the pets category. So what are they considered? They're considered livestock. So what we did was uh, we, there was a pet expo at the National Center and we kind of just took our cows in. We actually took one of our bulls, his name is Love. He was three weeks old at that time. So we took him and we had a big crowd all around us, you know, because they never see anything like that. Guess what? We got kicked out of our room from there within half an hour. They said, this is not a pet you cannot drink. I'm like, how can you consider snakes as pets? Snakes you can take even on the TVC bus, no problem. Dogs and cats we all know, but tarantulas are considered pets. You know, but cows are not. And you can't blame them because, you know, the, the thing is, at the end of the day, they're, they're to be eaten. That's their main, their commodity. You know, they don't have the concept of taking care of them without anything in return. You know, so we are working on that as well to get them as a pet status, uh, where we can take them. But now, like we're here at Campbell, we have taken them in schools as well uh, as called therapy. Uh, we have taken them uh, different places, and we've already filed a petition and a complaint to the government to consider cows as pets. So it doesn't have to be the big cow, it's a big, small cow, but she's three and a half months. You know, we can we have baby babies coming all the time, you can bring them. So this is a breed we have here, which is very comfortable. Yes, Sorry, we'll take a question at the back, and then we have a couple more questions. So I have uh, one quick thing. How did Kalyug enter? In Srimad Bhagavatam, the entry of Kalyug is given. So what did Rishi Maharaj see? Rishi Maharaj see this one person and what he's done is cut out three legs of the nandi, of the bull. And the mother is calfless. The cow does not have the baby. So he swallowed the baby and put it somewhere, I don't know, so the mother cow is crying. That's what the entry of Kalyu is. And when Rishi Maharaj saw this, he pulled out his sword and really swallowed this guy. He turned around him and said, you know, I'm Kali, it's my year to come. So in the age of Kali, to, to do call protection is a very tough task. But Krishna says something in the Bhagavad Gita. He says, Krishi ko raksha vanijam, paishya karam shabhavjam. So, he says, Krishi, Krishi means farming, ko means ko mata. And the third word is very, very important. He says, raksha. Raksha is a little different than seva, no? Okay, I'm going to give some space, just a few more minutes and then you guys can come. But we're, we're still here. Uh, so, the next word he uses is Raksha. Raksha is a little bit different than Seva. Most of us are considered with Seva. But Raksha comes with a little more responsibility. A little bit more things that are needed to protect someone. And who needs protection are the enemies. Yes, sorry, go ahead. So, like, uh, uh, I was also com concerned about this whole topic about cows, but like uh, I was told by someone that if we offer to Krishna, then Krishna takes away all the sins. For example, like if you offer milk to Krishna, then uh, Krishna will take away all the sins from that milk, and the milk, uh, the cow whose milk we offer to Krishna, that cow will also get benefited. So, like this. Is this, is these things are true? Yes, of course it's true. You offer to Krishna, everything gets nullified. You know, but on that same token, you know, are you okay with, you know, the things that happen to the cow? The baby is what? Obviously we're not, right? So I understand that we don't have a choice. But here, now we do have a choice. Right? So why not support this whole cow? So why not take it, make it successful that we can take it to another level? You know, I understand a lot of us, we just don't have a choice. But if we don't make the sound, if we don't ask for the government, and if we don't move forward with it, if we don't help Oshala, 
be able to come forward and for thanking them in so many different ways. You know, let's be what we want. Volunteer work could be one. You know, for buying any products that the cows are offering, that could be another one. Coming there, bringing, uh, celebrating your birthday today. Go well, Bush Street's coming soon, and during the five day month. Come, see the shit of the cows. So I understand that when we don't have a choice, it's understood. But here you do have a choice today. You know, that you can come and support us. Yes, yes. Anyone else? Yes, Hare Krishna. Before taking any more questions, remember us all the others standing here to please be seated. We will we will get a chance to uh, see everyone. We will we'll have time in about five to ten minutes. So requesting everyone to please calm down. And probably we'll take just two more questions in the front of you. Yeah? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, thank you for your insightful knowledge about how protection is. Uh, shed more light on the spiritual auspiciousness of cow dung and cow dung and uh, how do you serve the cows during the eight winters like we have six months of winters here. So how do you serve, serve the cows in Gosha? Thank you so much. So the, the winter aspect is pretty cold and for the Indian cows we did find it difficult in the beginning. But now we're serving the cows for seven years and we have made a very beautiful Gosha. The ones that have been there you can see it. It's fully insulated, it's very, very comfortable. We have not lost any of our cows to the cold. Um, also, we're noticing a huge community that are being born. They're a little bit more hardy. So, they can stay outside. We, we don't bring them in until we at least minus 10. So, just when I touch the double digits, then, and it's something that we need the door open, they can come in and out as they please. So, we find that. Uh, Thank you so much for bringing awareness about our food and the cows. Actually, the scientists are saying that our food right now has 90% less nutrients. So everything that we are eating has only 10% nutrients. And it's so sad because like not all of us can have a farm. I live in a condo, I can't afford a farm. And uh, right now, Safe Soil is a global uh, awareness. Uh, SafeSoil.com. It talks about uh, how we can change uh, and ask the government to change the regulations so we can have cows in the farm instead of tractors and change the way we do farming like the way we did before. So please, I request everyone to go into safesoil.com and hear what the scientists are saying about our, our food and what we can do and ask the government to change the regulations so we can all have healthy food. So, and the letter is already drafted there. So, so, what, so what thing I want to add on to that. See, changing all these things, the main thing is the cruelty to the animals. we got to stop killing the cows and the babies. The tractors and all that are, are, are secondary. You know, it's so far ahead. You know, and even myself, you know, I don't think I will stop using tractors. You know, how can I get, you know, how much land can you put to me? With cow, you know, where are you gonna, and even bulls, you have to castrate them and turn them into, you know, oxen in order to use them in the, in the fields. We don't even do that. So I think how protection has to understand, put yourself in, a, in the calf, in the, in the roots of the cow, and then make that decision. You know, the cruelty aspect is, is what our industry really looks at. Like, we don't want any cruelty on those people. It's, it's a bar of all us. It's a bar of all that's the, that's the main thing. And if she lives her life, she will bless everything. She's jealous everything. She, she can handle everything herself. 
But she has one problem. She's a mother. Mothers are what? Unconditional love. Husband and wife still might have conditions, but mothers and child, there's no condition. It's unconditional. Even if 